Everyone knows about the huge aviation controversy that's been taking rounds on the internet recently. The entire incident went on to an extent where DGCA had to issue a show cause notice against a particular airline, eventually even suspending some of its senior officials. See, personally speaking, I don't know what's the conclusion of this entire incident, but I can tell one thing with conviction that is, through this entire incident, we have all gotten to know about the Airbus cockpit and its flap configurations. What really struck me is, we as trainee pilots are all taught about flaps and trained about its basics right from flying school. And any pilot around the world has to start from these little aircrafts and has to learn the basics from his or her flying club. Then if this is what forms the pillar of all flying operations, be it when you fly an Airbus or any airliner for that matter, why is nobody talking about that? Why is no one actually talking about the basics? So today what I decided is this particular video will talk about all the basics and all the things a pilot is taught about flaps and I'm sure if you stay tuned with me a lot of your questions and confusions will be answered. Welcome aboard my channel and on to a new video. If you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button or also you can subscribe right from here and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I'm out with a new video. Alright, so first we must get to know what actually flaps are. So every aircraft has two kinds of flight controls, primary flight control and secondary flight control. Primary flight controls comprise of your ailerons, your rudder and your elevator while the secondary flight controls comprise of your flaps, slats, slots, trim tab and speed brakes. For all our explanations today, we will take the example of the Cessna 172 because that is the aircraft I fly but this is also applicable for all other training aircrafts as well. Flaps are basically lift creating devices. They help the aircraft to create lift so that it can fly. But quoting Sir Isaac Newton and his third law, this is one particular law nobody seems to forget. Everyone remembers this law all their life. Talking about the first and the second law, people don't remember. Sir Isaac Newton mentioned that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Similarly, flaps along with creating lift also create another force which is called drag. Remember this particular point because this is going to help you to understand a lot of things further in this video. The whole aviation controversy began with the application of flap 3 and flap full in an Airbus 320. So the Airbus cockpit has 5 flap configurations but we will not talk about that in this particular video. We are more concerned about our little Cessna. The Cessna 172 has 4 flap configurations. 0 which is the clean wing. 1 which corresponds to 10 degrees of flaps, 2 which corresponds to 20 and flap 3 that corresponds to 30 degrees of flap. Now you know when you will join a flying club and actually start flying, I think within 2 to 3 sorties you will be taught about secondary flight controls where you will learn about flaps and its applications. The first place where you will learn to use your flaps is during a takeoff. Usually as a trainee, initially your instructor will tell you to put flaps to 1 or 10 degrees for all your takeoffs. Now obviously during a takeoff you would need maximum lift and minimum drag because it's an act where you actually defy gravity and fly in the air and hence you use flap 10. Now you may ask if I need maximum lift chahiye, then why are we not using flap 30? Well I think that's a valid question. I also asked my instructor this question and the answer to this is flap 30 again quoting Sir Isaac Newton would create so much drag along with creating lift that your aircraft will not be able to generate speed to lift off and you will actually end up using a lot more of the runway. This additional usage of the runway will cause you a lot of problem if your runway is short and you also might end up running out of the runway. So let us see what an actual takeoff in a Cessna 172 would look like. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard my flight. We are currently lined up runway 28 and uh, we will take it for a fact that all our before takeoff checks are complete. We will just set our flaps to 1 for the takeoff and then make a departure call. 
Star uh, Victor Tango, Sierra Kilo Yankee, lined up runway 28, ready for departure. Victor Kilo Yankee, cleared for takeoff, runway 28, winds calm. Winds copy, cleared for takeoff, uh, 28, Victor Kilo Yankee. Alright, so uh, let's open the throttle gradually and maintain the center line. While you are rolling on the runway, maintaining center line is very important. Now, on the count of five, open throttle. Airspeed alive. 40 knots, 50, 60 knots. Slight back pressure. And we are airborne. A point to be noted right over here is Takeoff can also be done without flaps, as in in a clean configuration. In that case, since you're not developing that uh, you know extra amount of lift to take off, you would just end up utilizing little more of the runway. Flying is all about logic. Nothing is rocket science. Use your logic and you will understand everything. The second place where you will use flaps is during landing. So basically, as trainees, uh, the way you practice your takeoff and landings is through circuit and landing exercise. What is a circuit and landing? You basically take off from the runway, make the circuit of the entire runway and come and land on the same runway. During landing, usually while making the approach, initially you will be taught to use flap 2. And let's see how you will make approach using this particular flap configuration. Alright, so uh, we are currently in the base leg and by this time we are already in flap 2 configuration and we'll continue with this. Star uh, Victor Kilo Yankee turning finals runway 28 for full stop landing. Victor Kilo Yankee clear to land 28. Clear to land uh, runway 28 Victor Kilo Yankee. So uh, we are in the perfect light slope as per Papi, but uh, in India mostly you will not have Papi, so judgments has to be visual. Slight addition of power. We will keep this power setting. As we enter the airport boundary, power cut. Now just glide. Flare. And land. So this is the flight analysis of the approach. We will talk about this in detail a bit later. Now we will talk about the last flap configuration of our Cessna 172, which is flap 3. As a trainee pilot, the first instance where you will learn about flap 3 is during a short field landing exercise. It is an exercise where you are not only taught to land the aircraft, but also stop the aircraft within a shorter portion of the runway. Hence the name short field. One thing to be noted over here is short field landings can also be done in case of an emergency. Uh, you know, when you have uh, engine power but you don't have fuel, so you have to make an emergency landing on some small portion of, uh, you know, plane land where you want to land your aircraft. In that case also, short field landing will come to a lot of use. So now, let's see what an actual approach would look like using flap 3. This time, we are approaching the same runway again, currently with flaps 2. Once established on finals, we will go for flap 3. That sound that you just heard was of flap 3 getting deployed. We are slightly high on the approach, but that is fine. Now, anyways, uh, due to flap 3, our rate of descent will increase. See, I reduced my power setting and my aircraft started sinking. This will happen with flap 3 and hence you would want to go with power. Mind you, this additional usage of power will burn you a little more fuel. Unlike flap 2, this time we will not cut power until we flare. There I flare and land. If we look at the flight analysis of flap 2 and flap 3 approach side by side, clearly you can make out that the flap 2 approach is a lot flatter than the flap 
थ्री वन विच इज डीपर ऑल्सो वेन यू फ्लाई द एयरक्राफ्ट इन रियालिटी यू वुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट योर डिसेंट प्रोफाइल इज डिफरेंट वेन यू आर यूजिंग फ्लैप थ्री using flap 3 obviously uses up a little bit of more fuel because uh, when i using flap 3 you will have to add a little bit of power and come in for the approaches uh, so that you can prevent your air speed from washing out because of the extensive drag that the flap 3 is creating like i mentioned in case of takeoffs landings can also be done without flaps in that case since you're not developing that extra drag you will end up utilizing more of the runway in order to stop your aircraft Again, it's just simple logic. <laughs> If you think तुमने पूरा रनवे का पैसा दिया है लैंडिंग के लिए तो करो आराम से फ्लैपलेस लैंडिंग एकदम फ्लेयर करो आराम से आराम से टच डाउन करो पूरा रनवे यूज करके ही वैकेट करो वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू बी नोटेड राइट हियर इज ऑल दी कैलकुलेशन दैट आई शोड यू टूडे वेर डन अंडर नॉर्मल वेदर कंडीशन देर वेर नो एक्स्ट्रा क्रॉस विंड नो रेन नो स्टॉम नथिंग बट इन इंडिया द वेदर इज नॉट ऑलवेज स्टेबल you know the weather in india keeps on changing with every season also in india we have a lot of runways that are pretty short so as an airline pilot you will have to make a decision and choose your flap configurations accordingly because be it the length of the runway or the weather conditions all of this will influence your approaches and your decision to use which particular flap you want All right uh, so to be ending this video i just want to tell you that this particular video was not to take any side you know whether flap 3 is okay or flap 4 is okay this particular video wasn't at all for that i don't think i am at any position to be commenting about flaps and its configurations on an airbus i have never flown it and i don't want to comment on something i am not 100% sure about but i threw some facts to you and i leave it upon you to decide what is right and what is wrong on that note that was about it from my side in this particular video if you like the video please do hit the like button and also add a small comment on which particular approach you like more the flap 2 or the flap 3 i'm talking about the cessna 172 also please do comment if you like my flight simulator portion and if you want me to make more of these flight simulator videos until next time aviation is a vast pool of knowledge you know be it like an 18 year old student pilot or a 60 year old boeing 777 commander everyone is learning every day so keep your doors open to opportunities and knowledge and keep learning and keep growing